Hello there sexy PlayStation gamers and welcome back to another pure PlayStation video review and this time it's F1 2020 on PS4. I love racing games, I really do, but when I'm given the choice between something like Drive Club, Forza Horizon and any number of the officially licensed F1 games, you can bet your last breath that the F1 games are left out in the cold. Or so it was. But something has changed this year. F1 2020 has got me by the short and curlies, and I find myself sitting up into the early hours of the morning bemoaning my bad luck and my idiot teammate driver. I'm hooked, and I think you could be too. The problem with F1 games, or at least the way I see it, is that they're typically simulators, and they're catered towards the hardcore F1 fans. You know, the kind who happily travel away to race weekends to catch a glimpse of Lewis Hamilton for... 2.4 seconds as he blitzes past in a souped up machine. For casual players like myself, this has always been a massive turn off. There are rules and regulations and you're constantly getting jip in your ear for doing the wrong thing. You're a driver for a company and if they don't like the way you're racing, they're happy to let you know it. This time around though, you don't have to take any of that crap. You get to give it instead. F1 2020's My Team mode is a fantastic blend of FIFA's dramatic The Journey mode, a little bit football manager, and a little bit business simulation. And it works. It puts you not only in the driver's seat, but also the throne of the racing brand you now own. You start off by creating your own avatar, then choosing your team's name, picking sponsors, and eventually choosing which manufacturer you will entrust to build you an engine worthy of the racing gods. You also get to pick a teammate to take you to the track with you, but you've also got a budget to manage, so spending big on a decent engine might mean having to settle for a less than ideal co-driver. It's not ideal, but starting out in business never is, and I can tell you that from experience. I am broke. The idea is that you probably won't win the championship in your first season, maybe even not the second or the third. But over time you'll grow your business, stockpile funds and improve your capabilities along the way. It might be a game of fast ass to the wall racing, but the long game is a marathon, not a sprint. Having control over my own team gave me a real reason to give a damn. I'm normally quite aggressive in racing games. I'll hit the corners hard and fast, skidding like last night's curry in your knickers. I'll give other racers a nudge if they're in my way, and if I can get them to crash, all the better. This is why I'm basically on a permanent timeout in Gran Turismo Sport. I am not liked in that community. F1 2020 doesn't allow this. Well, it kind of does, but these machines are mine and the cost of repairs falls on me. So yeah, I took to the tracks with all the caution of a spotty 17 year old kid doing their driving test. I lost, badly, but at least I only had myself to blame and I only had myself to give me a bollocking. I let myself off, of course, because I have a natural bias towards me. The point is, there's a lot more reason to take the game seriously when you're invested, and I was really invested. So much so that I've missed out on sleep and meals because I was sure I could hit a top five finish at the end of the season. That didn't happen until my third season and my fourth night of getting nagged into bed at 1am. The gameplay then, is it any good? Yes, if you're a hardcore F1 fan, there's everything you could wish for and more. As a complete and utter amateur, I can't begin to tell you what all the fancy dials and charts mean during a race, though I do now know about tyre temps, and I'm always amused to see the steering wheel looking like a console gamepad on crack. I'm a casual player, so did this harm my enjoyment? No. Because F1 2020 has a setting called casual, and it's what I used. No, I'm not a scumbag. This tweaks all the settings to make the game less sim, more sim cade. You'll still have to drive carefully, but the game will kick in the brakes automatically if you're hitting a corner too fast, and it'll help you steer on course if you're heading into a wall. This might sound a little off-putting, but honestly, I barely noticed for the first day I played, and it was only when I was interrupted and let go of the controller that I noticed that my machine start to slow down into a corner without any input from me. After this happened, I did tweak the settings a touch to lower some of the assists and give me more control over my inputs and make me feel less like a baby playing Mario Kart 8 with all the kiddie assists on. Plus, it helps in chasing them oh so precious milliseconds. Saying that, even with the assists, I struggled to win. 
and once I lowered them, I struggled even more. But I learned quickly, and eventually I got to enjoy being in last place, because if you can't be the best, be the worst. At least you'll be remembered in some fashion. That's advice for life, kids. <laughs> the racing itself is pure Formula 1, through and through. The gameplay hasn't changed much since last year's release, but I'd argue that it really doesn't need to. It's the same battles for pole position, tactical overtaking, defensive manoeuvres, and, in my experience, a lot of luck. Or bad luck. The fact that the game is now opened up to casual racers like myself, and people who would have perhaps only have dipped into F1 racing via Codemaster's fantastic multidiscipline racer grid, this is a fantastic achievement. Throwing in the management side, complete with interviews, hiring and other intricacies of running an F1 team is a cherry on the top of a fantastic looking bit of game cake. Of course, you don't have to go through the my team mode if you don't want to, there's the traditional single player if you want it and if you want to get yapped at for smashing into Vettel's racing vessel. <laughs> that was rubbish. There's a whole online multiplayer suite, which sadly I didn't really try out because it's not my thing, but it's there and it's nice to have if you want it. Visually, F1 2020 is brilliant to look at, especially when all the different weather effects come into play, with the rain bouncing off the cars and the sun beaming from the sky and blinding you as you hit the corners. Fantastic, thanks for weather. In all, F1 2020 is a great game. If you've not tried it before, now is the time to get involved. There'll still be some things that you don't understand, like myself, the terminology, I haven't got a clue what is being said most of the time, but I have fun out on the track, and that's what matters most. And that brings us to the end of another review. Thanks for watching, I hope this was enjoyable, informative perhaps. Um, if you haven't already, please consider giving us a like and subscribe. It helps us bring more stuff for you to watch. Isn't that lovely? Until next time, stay sexy, keep washing your hands, keep playing games, and bye!